morning, Chodesh Tov, or to say Yiddish, uh, we are holding now at the finale, chapter 9, Parak Tess. We just had Haman's, um, Haman getting killed, we just had the Jews sending out a reverse order of the decree. That's what we're holding. So now, oh, hold on a second. Good morning, and if I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I'm sure else on, on, on the game. Okay. Now it actually came to the time of Chodesh Adar, the 13th, which it came time to do the law of the king. So they had to do the execution now, and the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, it was turned to the contrary, that the Jews had rule, had rule over those who hated them. The Jews were going to go kill everybody who wanted to kill them. Anybody who signed up for Haman's, for Haman's army, whatever it is, or signed up for Haman's decree, now they have the control to them. These are the words to the famous Purim song of the Nahapachu, Ashtigishtu Ayyudim Him If you want to circle them so you know the words when you when you learn to sing in a Purim. Those are the words. Okay. Nikal Ayyudim Areyam. The Jews all gathered together in the cities of Chobadinus and Malchasheresh. In all the provinces of King Akshar Shlach Yad, to Leahem of Akshi Rasam of Ishla Ahmad with Nan Kinafa Pachna Al Kol Amen. To Leahem people that wanted to kill them, but no one could withstand them, because everybody, the fear fell on them, because they realized Mordechai is now the second the king, they have no more backing, they have no more Haman, so everybody had fear. Chosso Reham Medina is Akhashonim of Bachis of Isam Malacha Ashal Nakhunas, and Nasim is a Yehudim Kinafa Pachna Mordechai Aleem. And all the rulers as well, and the governors and the officials of the king helped the Jews because the fear of Mordechai had fallen upon them. It says the bottom of the Vilna Goat, they not only helped them, they also gave honor to them because they realized that, well, again, we'll bring in World War II as an example. After World War II, there is an airline called Lufthansa. Now, I don't know if it's still like this, but I know 30, 40, 50 years ago, when Jews would fly that airline, they would treat them really, 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 really well. They like they upgraded them to not shut not stop, and they, they they treated them very, very well. It seems like more like reparations for the things that they did wrong. Because Mordechai was great in the king's palace, <coughs> and his fame went throughout all the provinces. This time Mordechai grew greater and greater. And now it's on the 13th. So, Jews struck all their enemies with a stroke of the sword and slaughter and destruction and did what they did what they do, did what they would do, what they would to those who hated them. It's still very early for me. I got no sleep last night. Please forgive me. Vav! That was around the whole world. What about Shushan? Shushan Biro Hargo Ayhudim Ba'abir Khamesh Meois Ish. In Shushan itself, they killed 500 men and also. Oh, no, I have to take a breath. Hold on. We do that in one breath. Ten sons of Haman. Yeah. Did you start from nine chapter nine today? Yeah. Okay. Here you see you see where the split over there on page eighteen? Yesterday? Yeah. You see where on page eighteen and split, that's where all the mother ten sons. So also Haman's ten sons are hung. Now, why does why is there a v s in between every single one of his sons? Well, I'd say v, like above is an ad, ant, right? Why v s? So I heard the reason is because Two brothers can't get an aliyah. The Allah is two brothers can't get an aliyah one after the next. So you need to split them up. So you put up an S in between. That was a joke. And Sarah bin Haman, sorry, who them? The sons of Haman, who was the enemy of the Jews. And with the spoils of war, they didn't touch. Which is different from Mitzrayim. In Mitzrayim, they did take the spoils. Kosh Gadol. They didn't take anything. Why didn't they take anything? By the way, like we mentioned, there's a few psukim that we 
say in the statute in Echatrap, in Echatun, this is one of them. That we didn't take any free stuff. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, it's not. That day, the number of those who were killed in Shushan in the capital were brought before the king. Okay. The Jews, the king says to Esther, you happy with me? You're very proud of me. Look, I cleaned all the dishes, and I washed the floor, and I took out the garbage, and your people got to kill 500 people. And not only that, also, Now, what else do you want? What other stuff? And now I can give you half the kingdom. What, 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 else, what else is driving you? A time for Esther. So Esther responds. If it's good with the king, also tomorrow, give for the Jews that are in Jushan, to do the law that was for today. And also tomorrow, hang Haman's ten sons on the tree. Huh? Don't make any sense? They were just hung already. We just, we just said they were hung. We'll have to see in a second. But, why machar? No, not because of that. Why machar? Because in all the letters that were sent out, yeah, Haman sends out a letter, the 13th, kill all the Jews. Then Mordechai and Esther send out a letter, the Jews kill you. There's no mention of a 14th. The 14th day in any of the letters. So Esther asked Echashverosh to put in, also on the 14th, which was never any of the decrees, to show that the laws actually came from Echashverosh. It wasn't just Haman having a vendetta against Mordechai, Mordechai having a vendetta against Haman. Only did Echashverosh get involved, and nobody did mention any of the letters, the 14th. So that's why she asked for the 14th as well. So the war went on for the 14th as well. Now, Gam Machar, what's this, what's this, what's this Haman's 10 sons? So this is a little famous, Every, almost everybody knows, but we'll touch on it quickly. I don't know if everybody heard, in 1939 to 1945, there was a Holocaust. A Shoah. Really? What? You heard about this? Yeah, I think I might have. Look, some people deny it. Uh, anyway, so these Nazis were criminals, these were evil people, they annihilated, or tried to annihilate us, six million of us. At the end of the war, when they lost, there was a trial set up for the leading heads of the Nazi party. They tried a bunch of people. They convicted 11 people, 11 officials, and they sentenced them to hanging. This is in November 1946. They sentenced them to hanging, which is a very uncommon practice. The German practice was put in front of a firing squad. And at the time, all the other countries that had the death penalty were using the chair. Yeah? If a Jew ever gets elected chair, the warden will say, would it kill you to sit down? Yeah? So, and it was a very rare thing that he sentenced them to hanging. The night before the hanging took place, a fellow by the name of Hermann Goering killed himself. Now turn back, if you will, for a second to page 18. You notice on the name Parshandasa, there is a small saf. If you go to a little further down by Parmashta, you'll notice there's a small shin. And if you go to the last name by Zasa, there's a small Zion, which spells Tough Shin Zion, which is 19. 47, but because Rosh Hashanah comes out four months before the new year, it was already, the Hebrew year was already seven, and it was, it was November 1946. It's a hint. She's asking, please, let Haman's ten sons, people say that the Nazis were descendants of Amalek. Let Haman's ten sons hang tomorrow. Tomorrow meaning in the future. Mechar Hashem Rosh in the future. Let Haman's ten sons, and the Megillah hints to it. We hint to it in our Megillahs, to the year that it happened, and everybody said, no, it's not going to happen because only 11 people are going to suggest for 10 sons. And that night he kills off, 10 people get hung. How many 10 sons? It's really cool. I find it fascinating. Okay. 
Remember about last day's cane. Lehe also is cane, but he does in dust to shine on the race of chess when they have one to loot. He commands so it be done, the crew was given out of Shushan, and the hang come with ten sons. And they gathered again on the second day. And they killed Shushan. Three hundred more men. And they didn't take any free stuff. Now why are they not taking free stuff? You know how the Jews got the Ten Commandments, right? You know how they got it? They were offered to every other nation. It says, what, 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 you want a commandment? What's a commandment? Um, don't kill. Well, uh, how am I make my living, right? Right. Get to the Jews. How much is it? Free? I'll take ten. So, why didn't they take any free stuff? It's a good question. I still wonder to this day. Why didn't they take any free stuff? But, on the bottom, I believe I wrote somewhere. Oh, it's to show that, they're, that the reason for killing is not money-driven. They're not killing them because they want their money. Because then people will say, okay, fine, it was just a war. It was a spiritual war. It was a physical and spiritual war. So they're not going to take any money because they don't want to they don't want to have, have, have the messages um, uh, intertwined. Their, their motives for killing the people, or they're killing people who want to kill them, not because they have a lot of money. And other Jews that were in um, in other provinces of the king, Nikala also gathered Ram al Nashim to stand up for their lives. Benach me Abayim. And rest of their enemies. Faharik was a name, Chamisha Vashivim Elef. Outside of the provinces, they kill 75,000 people. Uvaviza, Leishel Chas Yada. And they didn't take any spoils of war. They fought on the 13th outside of Shushan. They fought on the 13th. Then they rest. Then they fought a little. Not they didn't, they didn't fight on the 14th. They rested on the 14th and they made the 14th their Yom Tov. So outside of Shushan, the 14th was Purim. What about the Yehudim? By Yehudim, Asher Shushan. That was Shushan. Nikol B'Shlosh Asher Bay. So we're just doing a little quick recap. The 13th they gathered, they gathered and they fought. And also by, they fought on the 14th as well. And they rested on the 15th. And they made that day, which is what we do in Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim we hold the second day, which is the 15th. Because the Gemara says, any city that had a wall from it, a wall around it, from the times of Yeshua ben Nun, reads the Megillah on the second day. So if anybody really wants both days, move to remote. Anyway, because they, they had not sure if they're part of which line or not, so they have to read both days. So that's pretty good, two days apart. Pretty good. My father went to China over two days, a two-day Rosh Chodesh. The second day of Rosh Chodesh, he davened Mincha with the Alav Yavod. Then he davened Mayriv without any, without any, without anything special. It was regular Mayriv, Rosh Chodesh was over. Got on a plane at midnight, flew back to New York, crossed the international date line, so he went back a day. He davened morning with Halal and Musaf, third day. And then he had to dive in with Yalyave, and then he had regular Mayrif. So he had three days of Rosh Hodesh. So my uncle says to him, You chacham money go per him. <laughs> okay. So we're holding. Okay, so, so we do on the 15th, and that, and um, we, we, because Shushan, we do just like Shushan, which is on the 15th. People who live outside, who live in the cities, they make the 14th of Adar a Simcha, Umishta, and partying, Viyamtiv, Umishlach Manais Ishlari Ayu, and send gifts or presents or portions. From man to his friend. I want to expand the Mishlach Manesh. I just want to finish, make sure we finish the Megillah and then we'll go back. But as the Mordechai Sarah Ma'ela, we shall Sarah Al Kola Yehudim, Hashem Chom Nenes Amal Chasheres Akrayim Nurchaykim. And Mordechai wrote these things. What are these things? These things is this Megillah actually. So let us all the Jews that were in process against Shesh, but near and far, basically to tell them we're making a new holiday, guys. We need everybody on board. We need everybody to keep keeping this. What is he telling them? That you should 
that you should observe. These days, the 14th and the 15th of Adar, every year from now on. days the Jews rest from their enemies. In the month that we flipped around from sorrow to joy, from evil to and from mourning to yom tov, make them into days of parting and happiness. And give from um, um, gifts, presents, portions to from man that's random and gifts to the poor people. And the Jews all undertook it to do as they had begun and as Mordechai had written to them. They all agreed right away that this is something we need to do. This is something we all should do. Because Haman Amdasa, he made a lottery to plot against and kill the Jews. To consider them and to destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded the letters of his wicked plot get rid be gotten rid of, and divided against the Jews, which should return upon his own head. Then he and his son should be hanged on the gallows. Al Cain. Therefore, Purim, we call these days Purim Al Shem Hapur. Now, if I ask you, what's the, not the most, what seems to be not the most significant part of the story? The fact that he drew a lot to pick which day he's going to do it in. Yeah? And if it was a different day, it was a different day. It seems very interesting, but Purim is called because of the lottery. Poor. Poor is the lot. Especially concerning this matter, what should it come to them? What do you mean, Mahigialim? What had come to them? What had come to them, I don't remember, we spoke a few days ago. What had come to them was an understanding. They were scared. They had things going on. They were things they didn't understand. And they're now realizing everything happens for a reason. Everything Hashem does, the time of it is for the good. And we finally realize. A mahi gyalim, what had come to them, what gift they had coming to them, is they realized even in Gullus, even when we're under this King Achashirish and Haman making decrees and ever, Hashem will never leave us. Kimu v'kiblu ayyehudim, and the Jews were um, uh, ordained and took upon them, Aleim al-Zaram and other children, Stol Nilum, Aleim Le'avar, Le'ez, Aleim, Meshnei, Yemum, Eile, Ketzalim, Uzmanim, Le'ez, Ketzalim, Fufuns, Ketzalim, 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 in every year. Kimu v'kiblu, we're going to discuss that in a second after, if we have time as well. And it has to be passed on to every generation, to every family, to every province, to every city, and everybody that this day of Purim should not be uh, passed through the Jews, not, not, for any, not for all the generations. Why every generation? Because every generation was in the decree as well. Because if you annihilate all the Jews, there is no more Jews to, be, to come from them. So every generation, we are here because of this nace of Purim. That's what we celebrate. We're part of the nace. And Esther wrote the, the, Esther the queen, the daughter of Abichail. And Mordechai the Jew wrote with all authority to confirm the single letter of Purim. And they sent it out, letters all the 170 provinces to all the, um, the kingdom of Cherish, the words of peace and truth. For days of Purim in their times appointed, according as, Mord as Mordechai the Jew and Esther the Queen had joined them. And they had to for themselves and for their offspring and with regard to the fasting and lamenting. Okay, cool. Mama Esther Kiyam Debrea Purim, Ha'elam Nechama Sefer. And the Kriya of Esther was confirmed in these matters of Purim, and it was written by Sefer in the book. Umara said that she sent it to the rabbis of the time to make sure to get it part of Tanakh, which it is. And the last one is the last chapter, is a really, really long chapter. Vesamalach Achash Reish Achashverosh. Vesamalach Achash Reish Masal Aretz Iyem Ayam, and Kachash Reish laid tribute upon the land and upon the islands of the sea. 
Accepted upon them. What does it mean they accepted upon them? So there's a Gemara in Masechet Shabbos, Daf Pei Ches Amit Aleph. That says, after, when, when the Jews came to Har Sinai, God, they said, God says to them, You want the Torah? And what do they say? Nasev Nishma. I will do and I will hear. Whatever you want from me, Lord, I'm here. And he says, okay, good. Just hold on one second. You want the Torah? Accept it now, good. If not, you're, this is going to be your burial. Hmm. Forces them. It's true, sir. Kofron Lemus, a Forces them to keep the Torah. So now, after my Torah, the Jews had a great excuse, because we're good at their excuses. If we ever did something wrong, what can we say? I couldn't help it, I was forced. That happens until Purim. Purim came with a kiblu, they re-accepted the Torah out of love and took away that issue. Because there's no sense of, I don't know where it right, it's making me sound intelligent. There's no sense of achtos, of unity, knowing the fact that you're going to die tomorrow. You're going to stand together, stand tall, stand, stand strong. There wasn't a sense by man Torah, by the given Torah, there wasn't a sense of I need you and you need me. But Purim, they had completely, they had Ahamas and Nais. They loved the Nais. Kiblu Aleim says the Gemara, they accepted upon them Amash Kiblu Kra, what they already accepted. But now they accepted just purely out of love for the Nais. They realized that in every single moment, every single aspect of the story was miracles. And yet, when I showed this Megillah to Brookheimer, he says, he wrote it in the same lettering as, as the Sefer Torah. What about God's name? God's name doesn't appear in the Megillah. Hashem's name is so hidden. So hidden from us. And that's also, Megillah's Esther is to be Megala, to reveal Eta Esther, the hidden. The whole story, God's name is not in it. It's hidden. But when you see the end of the story, you realize how God had a hand in, just, 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 just to sit there, He has a hand in every single part of the story. And we send, nowadays the Meneg is, the Halach is, we send some of Shlach Manas. Now it used to be, Shlach Manas, you made two or three, and you handed them out to your friends, they handed you back one, and then you pack, repackaged that one, handed it to your next friend, he hands, it, he hands one back to you, you repackage it, and then you just keep going back and forth, so you're not left with that much stuff. Or else, remember what I'm talking about? You never did that? You want to repackage stuff? The Mishlach Manas is repackaging and sending it all out so you don't have to uh, make. But now, you need 60 Mishlach Manas, and they have to have a theme, and they have to have a nice card, and no one reads it. And then you go to somebody who you're not on their list, and then they give you a Mishlach Manas back, which is actually yours that you gave to someone else, <laughs> and it's good because you like your stuff anyway. There was Malikas. Amongst the rabbis in the in the fifties, uh, somebody asked the Chazamish. There is a concept of a matana amanas lahachsir, which means a gift on condition that you return it to me. Yeah, I give you a gift, make sure uh, on condition that you return it to me. So can you give mishloch manas with this halacha? Can I give mishloch manas? Here, this is for you, on condition you give it back to me. I'm Yotzi the Mitzvah, and I get it back. And I can just go to you now. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, that's a wrong holiday. Chazanesh says no. Because the goal of Mishlach Manas 
is to create achta, to create unity. And I put in what I like, and you put in what you like, and we switch. I'll eat what you like, and you eat what I, you eat what I like. Because that creates reus. Purim is a real of the shla, who says Yom Kippur is Yom Kippurim. Like Yom, Yom Kippur is like the day of Purim. Let's put this in the context for a second. The day they were wearing white, standing and fasting, and bowing down to God, sitting in the shul all day, is almost like the day they were slam drunk, slobbering on people, throwing up over the floors. Or just me, at least. What's the comparison? Comparison is, Yom Kippur, everybody's standing to themselves to ask for atonement. But Purim, we're all standing together. We need achdas. We need unity. So, that's the deal with Mishloach Manas. Now, I wanted to go back on one more thing. Um, yeah, I dealt with that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's all I'm going to do. So there's another minute that we also, I don't know if anybody bought costumes yet. Do we have a theme for our costumes? <laughs> I think we should all put on Bekishas, by the way. I have one, but uh, I think we should all, everybody else get Bekishas wear a purple. No? <laughs> no, they used to go like this, and it's like, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> wear costumes. Why are we wearing a costume? Because the reason why we're in costume is to hide who we really are or to show who we really are. I had a friend of mine who, when we were in yeshiva, there's a dress code. So he couldn't wear whatever he wanted. As soon as he left, it's okay, sermon's perm came around, he dressed a very interesting way, which is the way he really wanted to dress always. But he couldn't do it because he was in a dress code, yeshiva. So he was able to do it a perm. That was a real expression of who he was. Listen, some people are really teddy bears. I'm saying some people are. Some people are firefighters. In their essence, they want to show that they're firefighters. Arielovsky said a story where there was a woman who lived in Harnov who came to their house to give Mishlach Manas. She was a very tsunua, very modest woman, but she wanted to dress up also. So she decided she's going to dress up like a very harmless animal and no one like something not provocative. She said she was just like a rabbit. She put on rabbit ears and a little pom pom. Mm -hmm. And if everybody grew up in America in the 70s, 80s, they had, they had to explain it to her why it was inappropriate to wear that. <laughs> we wear costumes because this entire story is with a mask. Hashem is wearing a mask. Hashem is not showing us his hand. Before, <coughs> before Kabbalah Satorah, we saw the ten makos. We saw, well, we saw Kriyas Yamsov. We saw the splitting of the sea. Right? Matan Torah is going to compare to a wedding. And exiting, exiting Mitzrayim is considered to the engagement party. And the makos are the dating. <laughs> He's wearing a mask. So we want to show that even when we're wearing a mask, who we are doesn't change. So even when a Kadosh Baruch Hu, when the Almighty puts on a mask, He doesn't change. He's still there for us. Sometimes He has to hide Himself from us. But He's still there. His face is a little covered, but it doesn't change who the Almighty is. Agal Chaydash. If you like this video and other videos, please subscribe to our channel below.